Hello everyone, my name is British Logger Sam and I hope you're having all having a good day. Now today in this video I wanted to just tell you guys the technical side and filming side of my vlogs, like what I use to film, uh, different equipment and just the general equipment I use to edit. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how I edit because I've already done that in a previous vlog. Uh, it was like 90% of the video. Uh, how I edit my videos. I showed you guys on there. I did a screen recording of how I did my edits and stuff. But this time it's just going to be more of the equipment side of things. So what I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off with the camera. Now some of you may know what camera I have. I have a Lumix G7 uh, that which I got for Christmas. Yay! Uh, but um, this camera is a really good camera, it has blurred depth of field and the kit lens is amazing. This video right now is actually being shot on the kit lens, uh, so there's a toaster for you. Uh, and I'm currently recording this in 4K but I've downscaled it on my computer to 1080p uh, just because uh, my computer isn't powerful enough to edit 4K video yet because uh, a processor isn't powerful enough due to it being an i3-6100 pretty much the top of the line i3 but it still can't uh, edit 4k video uh, so a few things about my camera it has an articulating screen so I'm looking at the screen right now so I can pull the screen out and I can put an external microphone on the top which is really handy uh, because then you have because uh, it's good because then you have total control of what audio you bring out of the camera the camera is also useful for setting up really quick time lapses, like I can just turn the knob on here and then it'll go into time lapse mode, uh, which basically means it will take pictures like every 5 seconds or however uh, you set it. So basically when you turn it on it'll come up with intervals, so basically that means like how many seconds between each picture the camera takes. And then at the end of that the, the camera then puts it into a, a video using your set resolution settings. So at the end, once it's done, it'll say, uh, fra it'll t ask you to set your frame rate, your resolution, do you want it in 1080p, do you want it in 4K, uh, do you want it at 24 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 25 frames a second. I personally choose 25 frames a second because this is what I shoot all of my videos in because I think it's a good frame rate, not too stuttery and I can keep that shutter speed really low if I want to. But benefits having a low shutter speed is that you get more motion blur but even though you don't get like smooth like 60 FPS, uh, it's smooth uh, if you want to shoot at like a lower frame rate, uh, at like, and you want to get that cinematic, all of that motion blur, you get, um, you see me wave my hands now, there's like a, but a smooth motion blur, you shoot 25 frames a second, because then you have to double the, that frame rate, which is one, which is 50, and that's your shot speed, so, say if I was shooting at 60 FPS, I would double that, and I would get 120, uh, 120 if I doubled that. So you would set your shot speed to 120th of a second. Any more than that can have can really have downhill benefits to your vid how your video file looks. If you sh set your shot speed too high, there can just be no motion blur, and then it'll just be like set framed like that, and it will give the viewer a headache. Trust me, it would. And then if your shot speed is too low, uh, it will create too much motion blur and uh, it will just look all blurry, like me doing this straight away would look like, I don't know, it would just look really blurry when I'm anything that moved. So, on to the audio and what I use for my microphone. The microphone is a Rode Video Micro, Micro, Rode Video Micro, that's what it's called, uh, and I've looked up uh, I did my research on this microphone just to see if it was good or not for £40 and it was good for £40. It was actually as almost as good as the Rode Video Mic Pro Pro, yeah, Pro uh, when I looked up on Google and the comparisons etc and it sounded just like that so I immediately um, got that uh, for my audio and it sits just on top of the camera right here on a something called a hot shoe mount which you slide on and then you've got like a twisty thing which will uh, secure it in place so it doesn't fall off. What I use uh, to hold the camera up when I'm out vlogging uh, I use Gorillapod 
Joby Gorilla Pod SLR Zoom, uh, just a standard Gorilla Pod. You've heard people complain about them many a time. Uh, basically, uh, I have a tip on how to look after it better and try and make it somewhat last longer. Uh, basically, keep all of your joints straight when you are going to stand it up on like the table or something because if it's, if it's all over the place, uh, the joints, like say if it's like that and then or like that and then like the end joint is here, it's going to be up put more pressure on the gorilla pod and damage it even more than you really want it to. Uh, so, And I think there's a spray as well that you can get uh, for your gorilla pod that will tighten up the joints uh, like the opposite of WD-40 basically. Uh, but I'm not sure what it's called, I haven't really done my research yet, but I know there is a spray out there that will, will do the opposite of WD-40. And then the ball head it's a heavy duty ball head uh, by XC Source. Uh, as you can see here, it's uh, made out of metal, like proper metal, heavy metal. And this is really heavy on its own if I take it off the drill pod. There you go. It's like really heavy because uh, it's metal, but um, you can loosen it off. Basically, what a ball head does is it allows you, say, the grill pod. It doesn't have that much flexibility on where I can position the camera. Say if I wanted the shot like on the table and the camera was like that, but I wanted the shot to be straight, what I could do is just set it like that. So say if the grill pod was like there, I could set it like that so the camera will be straight. So it, it, this ball head is really good. And if I think that the camera position is a bit off, I can just adjust it a little bit and just tighten this up like that and then perfect and it also has two uh, security things on the locking mechanism to hold in the quick release plate so you got this one here and then you twist you twist this at the bottom here so that thing will go in inside there and then it will not block this from opening so if I open this right now I need to put some force into it you will see that to hold this open this thing has come up so when you want to put your camera back on, you align this. You see there's like a step thing with this. And then you put it on like that, so it's like that. And then you push it on properly. And then watch this thing, the locking mechanism. Basically what happened just there, if I show you again in extra detail, this thing, when this thing here gets pushed down, it will allow this to go back into place but after you've, after you've uh, put like put it back on I would recommend you just give this a push just to make sure it's in place and I'm going to show you the importance of this locking, me locking me mechanism here as well okay so the importance of this locking mechanism mechanism uh, as you can see here it's like up can you see that's kind of up uh, and it's not allowing it will only go halfway and it won't let, I can't pull pull it out and let this quick release plate. It will go halfway like that, but that's as far as it will go. But when I push it back, see I can't, now that's like that, I can't get the quick release plate off. So the camera will not fall off. And so this is really important because if you knock your camera on something and you haven't got this locking me mechanism, that's going to fall off and break. So the locking mechanism is really important for your camera and I 100% recommend you put that lock, make sure everything is locked up properly. Now the tripod. The tripod is a TP2500 cam link. You've probably heard pretty much everyone uses this tripod because of how good it is and what it offers for the price. I picked up this from picked this up from the first cameras in Newcastle under Lime uh, for about £30, £29.99 actually and uh, it's on like Amazon for like £35 so it's a lot more expensive online but I was lucky enough to get this for a tad bit cheaper and it's really good because it's got a fluid head so if I loosen it up a bit there we go it's got like a smooth head like that and then you can move it around like that and it's really smooth uh, and it's probably the best tripod if you're after a budget tripod 
30 pounds, you can't go wrong. It's as tall as me. You can make it as tall as me. It's like a professional tripod. You can hook like a, a bag on it or something at the bottom to add for extra weight because if, if it is windy and you need to get a tall shot like this and close the legs up a bit, it's a little more unstable. So a bit of weight would help. Uh, say like a, if you've got like a heavy bag, that would do as well. This ca this tripod can hold up really heavy SLRs. So if you have a, like a really heavy like SLR, like a Sony A7S or a Canon 5D or what is it, a Canon 1D, like a, them great big massive ones, it, this will hold it up easily. Trust me. So now that the tripod's done, my editing headphones. These are 3.5 millimeter ones. I haven't got the cable connected right now because the kit's down there on the computer. I can plug it in actually. There we go, as you can see. Uh, it's more, it's called like a multi-platform uh, pair of headphones. So it's got like 3.5 millimeter thing. And then if, if you just needed to use it with your phone, the cable has two plugs so you can have like a shorter cable. So I've just unplugged it that from the other half of the cable like that. And then it's really short now. It's like, I don't know. Let's see how long it is. I'll stretch my arms out like that. There you go. Can you see that? So it's so it can easily connected connect it to your phone without too much wires. And then it's got like a Samsung looking charger port thing. You can't really see that because it's trying to focus on my face. But uh, and when you want to plug it into a main desktop computer, you can just plug it into the other half of the wire. The this thing here, and then you can plug the 3.5 mil into headphone. Uh, into your headphones and then you're good to go. These sound really clear, I got them from Game and they're really good headphones, they're really comfortable. They actually have like these air things, so which you know when you put a pair of headphones on you long, wear them for a long time but, and it gets warm on your ears, this prevents that by they've got like this air holes in the ear cushion. And you can turn up the volume right there, from there look, using that, and they can meet the microphone, the articulating microphone. So you can pull it, pull it out like that, and then you can use it as like a proper gaming headset as well as just a pair of editing headphones, which is what I use them for. One thing I recommend for your camera, if you haven't gotten already, optical lens wipes. These are really, these are really cheap, but they're really important because if you've got like a mark on your lens, people are going to see it straight away, and once you can see that mark on like, say if there's like a mark here or something like that, I don't think there is. I hope there's not anyway. Uh, people, once people see that, they're not going to be able to unsee it because it's just there and it's going to really annoy them. So keep your lenses clean using optical lens wipe. They're a pound from Home Bargains, which is like a UK uh, uh, like bargain store that's nationwide. And they're and they're you can just they're simple, but they're really good at what they do. So for my camera bag, I have a drawer -a gadget camera bag. There we go. Can you see that? You've got my old camera in there. I've got some batteries in there. And lots and lots of silica gel. I've got like three packets of silica gel. Look at this. Ready? Big packet of silica gel. It's kind of medium packet, and then like a smaller packet. Silica gel is really important for if you've got uh, like your camera bag. If you've got like a camera bag, I really recommend you put lots of silica gel in there because if that thing get, gets wet, your camera is absolutely screwed. Uh, so silica gel is really important. Also with the bag, it came with this cool thing. Uh, this little bag and then this little bag has this in it, which is what you put over the bag and it keeps it, and it like keeps it dry, keeps the, say if it starts raining, you can just put this over your bag and then it'll just like keep it warm somewhat waterproof. I haven't tried it out yet, see if it actually works, but uh, I, I can imagine it being pretty useful if I ever go out and start raining. I can just stop and sit, sit at the side of the road for a second, side of the pavement for a second and just put that over the bag to keep my uh, camera gear dry. My final equipment, I can't really show it you because it's down there, is my gaming uh, computer slash editing computer it's good at both to be honest but i don't really use i don't really play games that much i'm more of an editing type of person on pc i don't really ever play games that much because the games that I have are just boring they get boring over time and i can't really i don't really want to spend money on games i want to spend them more on camera gear 
and that's the problem I have because I get really bored when I'm not doing vlogs like in the week and stuff after school when I'm not doing anything I've just got nothing to do uh, so that's that's a bit oh well but this here the editing laptop so when I go out on holiday I can edit these logs on this Acer E15 if you're wondering what specs are it's got an i7-6500U dual core 4 thread processor very much like an i3-6100 I don't know why they called it the i7 uh, because if it's a dual core because it's not, not really an i7 if it's a dual core but it does the job it can render a video in like 30 minutes which is pretty impressive, impressive for a laptop and it's got a GeForce 940 and M in there and it's Windows 10 what more could you ask for the battery lasts about four hours when you're doing like browsing and stuff uh, what else have we got if you're after the model number what it is and you want to look it up on Amazon E5 574G72NL that's like the model number it's got a uh, two USB 3.0s on it can you see that there put it the right way there you go it's got HDMI out Ethernet VGA and it's got like a cooling fan at the side and then on the other side it's got a disk drive for you stone age people and then a USB 2.0 I think and then it's got like a charging port and that's pretty much it if you want to have a look at the laptop let me show you that's what it looks like there you go I like how the keys are like spaced out music started playing because I was listening to some music before the reason why I got this laptop instead of like a really powerful one is because I wanted a budget editing laptop and this this laptop is a really good budget editing laptop £600 i7 6500U 940 can't go wrong and it's a really good um, budget editing laptop and I really recommend it's got Windows 10 on it and it's really fast and it's got like uh, a good one terabyte hard drive and I've got my external hard drive down there so I've got plenty of space or whatever when I'm not as when I'm not on holiday I'm usually editing on my main gaming computer but which I will upgrade my main computer eventually uh, and I will upgrade this laptop when it's no longer the laptop if it's time I guess so if so if it gets a bit outdated I will which is in about five or ten years probably it, as long as it can still edit it on Sony Vegas Pro 14 I do not care a laptop is a laptop and as long as it can still browse a laptop is a laptop and as long as it's still the games play the GTA 5 uh, which it can do a laptop is a laptop uh, I hope you get my points it works basically so guys the last thing is my external uh, my passport ultra hard drive uh, I'll show you that now actually this is a really good hard drive I'm out of focus am I in focus now I am yes uh, it's a really good hard drive uh, I've dropped this like six times and it still hasn't broke so I don't know how that's possible it's a 5400 rpm drive so like a laptop hard drive but you get really fast speeds and it's got a USB 3.0 if you can see right there uh, it's a terabyte this one is you can get up to like four terabyte models uh, and it's black so it's nice and sexy I mean look at that and it feels so good like on the side there oh yeah it feels like so good and uh, you can plug it into pretty much any computer and you can back your files up to it uh, I have my games on this my, some of my vlogs and I've only used like, not, I think I've used just over half and of course I've got loads of vlogs on there, I've still got my vlog clips on there so like the raw inputs of like 4k video files what I'm recording on now so it, it really does go good um, it comes with its own software when you first install it you'll see like a software, it's like a backup software, I don't use it because I, I don't back up my, lap, my computer or whatever because it's too much hassle I hate I hate hassle like that with computers. I just want them to work, which sometimes they don't, and it can be really, really frustrating. Uh, but good hard drive, fast, uh, portable. You, I could fit this in my pocket. I'm gonna let me show you. Look, if I can fit this in my pocket, can I? This is the jean pocket, and it's really tiny. Can you see there? Except the wires hanging out, but you can take that out. You can just unplug that, and then. 
put it in like another pocket or whatever. But you can see how portable it is. This is, the, this is how big it is. Don't want to drop it. That's the size of my hand. There you go. So it's really portable. You can just put it in pretty much any any pocket or bag or whatever. And it's just a really good on-the-go hard drive. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, different type of video. If you did, um, like rating would much be appreciated. Uh, and I hope you learned something from uh, how I actually make my vlogs. There's actually a, more, a lot less equipment that I thought I'd be using. Because I see all these vloggers, I think they see use loads of equipment, but they actually don't. They just It's just them and the camera when they're out vlogging, or maybe the tripod. Uh, and then that's pretty much because all it is is this to hold the camera out this to stand up the camera on the gorilla pod and then the camera itself and then the microphone that's all you need to record and or you could just have an all-in-one compact camera like a Sony RX100 point, point and shoot camera or a G7X point and shoot and it's really that simple and it's really not hard to, I don't want to say it's not hard to vlog, but sometimes it can be when your camera acts like an ass and so, and you're still getting used to a camera like this. It can be hard sometimes, but I don't really want to say it's hard because I don't want to offend other people because a lot of people put a lot of work into what they do. But the way how I structure my vlogs and just hold it out and just show shots and simple, that's all I do, simple shots. It's not hard for me personally because I make it easy. I don't know, it's coming out wrong, I think. But it's just really time consuming vlogging is because it's hard at first in, in your first year of vlogging because you do not have any confidence in talking to a camera whatsoever. So uh, it's hard in your first year, but after that, you're pretty much done and you know how to do it with, with a breeze. Um, Maybe if you did like daily vlogging, I'm sure it would be a challenge, but I don't do daily vlogging or whatever. I know a lot of smaller YouTubers do and it's a challenge for them, but personally it's not a challenge for me because I don't do daily vlogging. If you go to a daily vlogger, like, I don't know, Marsbot, I'm sure if you asked him it, uh, and said, is daily vlogging hard, I'm sure he would say it's a challenge uh, because, yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog and I'll see, I'll see you all. Next video. Bye!